everybody can compete for Sam Maguire the way it is, but having the Telton Cup and people dismissing it already, I, I just think it, it annoys me, that entitlement. It annoys me, the fact that, you know, if you're good enough, you you'll play for Sam Maguire. Yeah, yeah you'll get your chance. Hi there, you're very welcome to the GAR with me, Darren Sullivan. I'm delighted to welcome my two guests today, two former All-Ireland winners, Dennis Bastic and Eamon McGee. Welcome to the show, boys. Cheers, Darren. Good Thanks to be back. Thanks very much. Eamon, you survived another week like myself? Yeah, survived longer than I did in Hell Week. You know, I think I lasted about uh, 30 minutes, was it? I was out the door again. <laughs> <laughs> so we're flying it here. Uh, so we'll get straight into the action. It was a massive weekend. But uh, I suppose, look, we'll start straight away with Division 1. Um, it's been a massive league so far. Uh, Kerry obviously guaranteed the top spot at the moment. You have our man Mayo playing out for maybe the final spot as well. And you have five teams who could get relegated. So I suppose, look, seeing that we have a dub and we have a Donegal man, we're going to start in Crow Park. Um, and I think you tipped Donegal to win that game. But I'm going to start with Dennis because the dubs are back. They're back. They're back. I wouldn't say back to their best, but uh, definitely some green shoots, definitely signs of improvements. I think that's what you're looking for. It may be all over the place initially for the first few games, but nice to see improvements, scores all around the pitch, momentum, all that that really good stuff that looking out for. And down to the last game, which we thought it would be, and it's up to them. It's in their hands now. Yeah, like watching on from like they're more familiar look to them now at the moment. I suppose people always forget about the first few games once you're winning the last few and you're going into yeah. championship with a bit of form. And I suppose from a Donegal point of view. That form is still a bit up and down. There was positive signs last year with McBrearty, but I suppose take out the maybe fortuitous goal and there was probably a bigger defeat on the cards. Yeah, l- listen, there there was positives. There was positives and there has been positives throughout the league for, for Donegal and we have to remember how many injuries there are in the squad. Mm. Jamie Brennan's not, not himself. He still is a bit to go in terms of that match pace of things. Michael Langan, who arguably is one of their Second and Murphy, most important players. You know, Hugh McFadden's getting more game time into him, so he's an important cog in the, in the Donegal. And, and, you know, there's just... Once Declan has everybody going, you know, and going well, I think we'll I think we'll still be in that top five, definitely top six bracket, but it's just about getting everybody on field and, you know, getting that flow. And to be going to O'Donnell Park, which is a complete graveyard for for Donegal teams down, down through the, that's in Larry Kenny down through the years you know dependent on points it's just not a, not a nice place to be Yeah and I suppose going back to the dubs I suppose the last couple of games even the games where they weren't going well Dean Rock Ryan Fenton Kieran Kilkenny they were the fellas who were standing up and obviously Dennis you'd know them well like and mm. they've developed into huge leaders like I'm just wondering what they're actually like around the dressing room because you see them on the pitch and they were the ones carrying the can even when things weren't going right and again, the last year, McCarthy back as well. And obviously from the outside in, you're like, I'd love to know what the boys are up for. Fly in the wall, kind yeah, of picking yeah. up a few secrets. No, look, it's, yeah, I think you're big players. You're looking for that leadership piece. And that, I think that's what differentiates the the really good players from the excellent players. So when, when things are up against you, you're looking for them to kind of step up and do something different or drag the team. And it was on their heads for, for a long time there, just maybe on their own. So with a few more bodies, you see Scully performing well yesterday, Howard as well. Um, so I think it takes a bit of a, an ease or the edge off what they have to do. But no, they're, look, I think when you've got players and you know what they're doing and they're making the right decisions and it's so much more easier for the team, you know, when you're standing side by side and you know he's going to do the right thing with the ball at the right time, that makes a huge difference for the team. And that's what those guys really do. Very few turnovers, very few giving away the balls and they seem to make the right decisions at the right times. Yeah, I suppose uh, watching it the last day, it was a lot more of a Dublin look to it and like that, the understanding was there between the players, which obviously makes the decision making easier. And I suppose a player that was back the weekend, James McCarthy, probably will go down as arguably for a lot of people the greatest player to ever play the game, which is big press for a Kerry man, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And himself and Michael Murphy had some yeah. battle. I know him and you hate the, the question of should Michael Murphy be stuck on top of the square? But he got a great goal in there. But for a long part of that, he was sitting there and they weren't looking up at him. Yeah, no, they were sharp. It's not players. that I hate the question. Like it's it's a valid question, but but I'm just sick of the debate. Mm. And you know, Michael is probably one of the grateful forwards when he gets an opportunity to play. But he but he's so good that the players that are there just there's a wide left when mm. Michael goes inside. And I just don't think there's enough players stepping up to fill fill that. And you know, we we have to remember natural kick passers in terms of the the Donegal aspect of the 
football and how they play the game, or maybe they don't have the best natural foot passers to get that type of ball in. Um, even the one Ryan put in on Sunday there, it was going towards the keeper. I still think the keeper should have had that, but Michael done so well to maybe palm it into the goals. And, you know, it's just, we all talk about Michael leaving him inside, but if, if we're not getting the right type of ball and, you know, if people out the field aren't filling that void that he leaves, then we, we can't afford to leave him in there. Yeah, I suppose it's one of the arguments that's been around for a while. If you only had two Michael Murphys, because like you said, he is so influential out the field as well, just his influence on everyone else around the place. And sometimes you wish Michael Murphy was outside kicking it into Michael Murphy. Exactly. And and when Michael's out, he's looking for the ball. He looks to kick yeah. it in. And he, he did that in the first maybe 10, 15 minutes where he spotted Jamie, he spotted Paddy, and he's looking to kick. And you always notice that as when you boys come out the field, that these are mad because you know that you, how to kick it in and you know what type of ball goes in and Michael's is always playing with the head up and like and n- not a lot of players would do that all the time play with the head up and look 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 to put it in there. Yeah, and like I suppose we found out over league as well, the ball always moves faster than the than the running player. And on that kicking note, I'm going to go to Kerry and Armagh. Um, it was an interesting game. I actually thought Kerry were very sloppy in the first half, but I think the one thing Jack has brought to them. Obviously, they're gone back to kicking, but mm-hmm. their defensive play for me has been a huge positive. Tyke Morley playing at centre back has been sweeping really well. And there was a funny tweet from Justin McNulty. He was saying how Pat's plan now has changed puke football down to track him back and hard work and work great. But I suppose this puke football thing has gone, it must be 20 years ago he said that. So yeah. I don't think. Is bar- that in 2011, Dennis? No, famous game. <laughs> So, um, like, scores. it was a big game, a big win for Kerry, I think. But I thought our man were a small bit off the boil. They've been my favourite team to watch so mm-hmm. far this year. They were hard hit until the last day. But um, I think if Kerry had their shooting boots on, it could have been a different game. Kerry, they, Kerry looked comfortable. Mm. Like, I know there was, a, there was a goal chance there at the end for, for our man, which could have you know, brought them back into it. But I think overall, they just they look strong. They look stronger on the day. They look more composed. And yeah, back to that work rate piece. It's what you love to see on your team is like three or four fellas going around. The Armagh guy with no chance of yeah. doing anything with the ball. So, And they're big lifts for the team as well. You know, a big turnover gets big, big boosts and it just drives your team on. Yeah, something we haven't seen from Kerry either geez, for a number of years. It's been the age old argument with Kerry, I suppose, that they don't defend well, they don't track the runners. But even the first half, the last you could see, it was very visible on TV that Kerry had two players sitting either side of the D. So, if our mad they come out they were looking for that kick there was no kick on hmm. which obviously gave the Kerry players a chance to get back thought Stephen O'Brien and Adrian Splan worked very hard again yesterday and that's an area that Jack has obviously prioritised and obviously Paddy Talley's got in there and he's changed a few things but um, no I think it's it's been positive for Kerry but at the same time very positive for our mass so they'll be going into the last game for me we've, we've mentioned it last week in the show how the, the league title it's a, it's a big medal mm-hmm. so you're looking it at is. from an Arma point of view the chance to get to a league final another game before they played in a gone championship Crow Park yeah you can't play enough games in Crow Park mm-hmm. and that's why I can't understand why more teams don't put emphasis into league getting to a league final which is a big final in Crow Park and you can't beat the experience of winning in Crow Park so it'll be interesting now going forward yeah, uh, and I think you know to get to Crow Park and you know, put in performance for Armagh you know if I'm in the Armagh camp I'm McGinney I'm thinking Fine tune the machine more, play against the better players because you, you'll whatever you do in the training field, you'll never beat the game mm. game day and the decisions you make and what you learn and you know that's going to take the team on and you know you talk about a good league, the fact that the season's shorter now, it's so vital to have that momentum. Oh, it is, yeah, and like like we we mentioned it last week as well. Division one is cutthroat, and even going back to especially when we would have started, it's a different competition. The league then to what it is now like there's no such thing as a team come back we'd say they're not up to match speed but they're all mm. fit they're all they're yeah. none of them are carrying a few, yeah. <laughs> a few extra I, pounds I used or... to laugh in, in the league you know you'd always get these uh, rookies flying and leading the laps yes. and you know Wouldn't first league them. game or two they were getting out in front and you know they were winning ball and then come April May time when the challenge games when everybody got to that level yeah. you know they were gone and you, were, you used to think you don't have that opportunity now. You have to hit the ground running. And that's it. I think like the days of starting the league off sluggish, I don't think you can do it anymore. Do you know, you have to be up to the pace. It is so heavy metal now. It's game on game. And like There's no time for coming back unfit and trying to get up to speed. And I suppose the last day, we, I was hoping Kerry would give David Clifford a weekend off and 
part of me obviously delighted he didn't get it because he came on and he he tore it up in the second half but I was delighted then for the, the big crowd that were in Armagh as well the last day mm-hmm. it was a full house and the crowd that went to him after obviously I've seen a few tweets and people so happy that their kids got onto the pitch to see him. That, that's what you want to see and in fairness to him like the goal wasn't great it um, wasn't a great finish but uh, celebration wasn't celebration. great it <laughs> no, needs a bit of work but I think Donny has been telling him to do it supposedly yeah. so look he, he he proved to be the difference again and he just looks is there concern over the over liability on him I think as a team. there has to be like I suppose look Shawnee wasn't playing either last year but Jack Savage came in and played in the 40 and I think he had five points three from play which was good going um, but the disappointing for me I think you had Killian Splann and Tony Brosnan Tony who'd been very good the two mm-hmm. games prior they had a great opportunity like because there's one for me there's only one spot up for grabs at the moment on that forward line and it's either going to be Killian Tony or Paul Ganey and Killian and Tony got a chance to start and they just didn't take it yesterday whatever was in it maybe yeah. Maybe they're just off colour so the Kerry are still very reliant on them I think they have enough quality if he's not there but they still like he came on the last eight, one two, and that was the difference in the in mm. the end like because Kerry were wasteful up to then Yeah and you know Clifford doesn't get injured they beat Tyrone last year and have yeah. Kerry moved on from that that's what you know y- y- you'd wonder and you're going out to prepare for Kerry you just think we stopped Clifford we go Great a long chance. way mm. to stop mm. this well, that's the thing and I think the one thing I've noticed during the league and paddy has been good um, but teams have left him off whereas last year Tyrone put Conor Myler on him mm-hmm. and it nullified him and in fairness to Paddy, first instinct is head up and look for the brother Yeah, yeah. so you nullify that which Tyrone did last year which I think the teams will do in championship too because they will sacrifice someone the, the difference between like that was a great ter- Kerry team uh, you played in you stopped the Gooch you didn't stop that Kerry team. Mm. You know, there are mm. plenty of other lads to step up and I, I just don't see that at this Kerry team now. I still think they probably will win the All-Ireland but if someone comes up with some kind of master plan to stop Clifford then... Two bodies, I think you could even go as far as sacrifice too. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's the way, to, probably the way to go in terms of like, hey, building him up and I like on this stage at the moment you're there going, Kerry do look the most likely but I do think a lot of teams that know they'll be playing Kerry later on, the line will have a plan in place for mm-hmm. them. And then it is a test of character. And I suppose, unfortunately, a lot of these boys haven't shown that they have the character. Now, hopefully, from a Kerry point of view, they do show that they have this year. But I think Tyrone put the blueprint there for teams last year. And we'll go straight on to them then. They had a great win against Mayo. In terms of the performance, for me, I, I wasn't gone on it personally. What do you reckon, Eamon? Tyrone are, are they're hard to even understand now because I just didn't give them a hope at all last year and they go and won, won the All Ireland. I, I just thought it was year one of their, you know, the way they were going to start, the new way they were going to play. And I think, you know, that result in Kerry, they learn an awful lot down there. And the reality is, if, if Clifford didn't get injured, they don't win that game. You know, he had to come off with cramp. I still think Kerry would have got over the, uh, got over the line. And, Again, we're, I don't think any of us are convinced in Tyrone, but the fact is that they'll save the best for the championship and they have that belief and they have that arrogance that all the top teams have or top teams need and, you know, they, they'll fancy themselves coming into the summer. Yeah, like that, they had a great starting to five points after 13 minutes and Mayo just didn't look to themselves. And in the second half, you know, I was expecting more from Mayo, but they just looked devoid of ideas up front, which is similar to Kerry with defence. It's an age-old Compliment or complaint with Mayo that the forward was just oh it was an experimental team but it was disappointing for Mayo in the second half yeah you would have think there would be much more drive to go on and win that game to try and get to the final um, kind of the personnel changes and but from Tyrone's point of view to go take a really bad what I would call a bad defeat the week before to go I'd say the, the week in training whatever went on or discussions like there would have been a lot of looking at each other and seeing is this what we're about then we're not too far away from championship and they go out and put a b- good performance in and win comfortable enough I would say you know against Mayo so yeah that's the thing even though Mayo had a good bit of ball they never seemed to be they created nothing they had a couple of good long range scores had a, a, quite a few bad bad misses and bad options taken but from a Tyrone point of view like I'll go back to the first 10 or 15 minutes they looked like the old mm-hmm. I don't know if they run out of steam or maybe it was just too easy but the amount of turnovers they had you had Peter Hart and you had Conor Myler mm-hmm. kicked five points between them from play outstanding scores Kieran McGeary was working hard and he hadn't had the best league I suppose the pressure of being player of the year he's kind of gone back to basics now and it's, it is just work hard and keep it simple because he yeah. had a couple of shots that 
probably should have done better with but he played well and a few more of them are just starting to take a bit t- take a bit more and tick, tick the boxes and get back into the groove the thing about the, the game you know Mayo they're so frustrating because they'd worked so hard to get into it and then they just kicked themselves kicked it away kicked them shot themselves in the foot and um, you know the personnel changes and all that it's a theme with Mayo in terms of you know their game management their ability to get over the line and is the personnel thing and changing up another way of getting an excuse saying oh we were trying things out but is it a bit late for trying things out Aidan O'Shea at, at six it's yeah he did, he did. He, we played quite well against Kerry no I know it wasn't at six we played quite well taking away the late free conceded it's just a hard one for me I'd be a big fan of Aidan O'Shea mm-hmm. I just don't think the style of football Mayo have suits him I think in another county he'd be one of the main men and he still is because he's a leader but I just don't think they can find a place to fit him at the moment obviously Dermot O'Connor wasn't playing the last day for me he has to be on the 40 because the way he started the league and I'm not sure what the story is with Killian because he's missed That's a lot of football is, yeah. and he, if he's if they're going to be competing they need him up front helping out Ryan O'Donoghue who, who has been a huge plus this year he, he's pro- proved to be a good leader as well the, the, the thing and you just go back to the personnel changes it doesn't matter like the, the theme remains the same you know what's been happening with Mayo back to the, the big battles they had against Dublin and you know any time they're such a team that I respect so much but you know they're so frustrating in terms of how many chances like and it's the same thing throughout the years and it just reminded me so much you know Kevin McLaughlin made so many bad decisions when they when they got into what then you know touching distance off Tyrone Kevin McLaughlin made so many bad decisions and just you know they lost momentum then when they when they had Tyrone in the wreck and mm. that seems to be the way they owe what what they do throughout the years yeah and I suppose Dennis we were talking about it off air about the importance of getting to a league final it's a national final it's a big final in Crow Park the opportunity to win it and the more games you play in Crow Park especially big ones and the more wins you you have there and collecting silver you think that'd be a big thing for Mayo now going into the last league game where they will look yeah. to get, put their best team out there and for me like we talked about it off field and you mentioned last week about your league medal they are important medals I know it's not the championship but Winning's habit for mm-hmm. me. What do you think about Mayo going forward? Surely, with God, they have to be thinking get to a like, final and I win think it. Even the small things like going on the bus, the journey, mm. the grow ball, all these guys maybe haven't experienced that to get to do that uh, early in the year to prepare yourself for, for the year ahead in case it crops up again, like Armagh or whatever the case may be, might be coming down for, for a final. So you can't really replicate that anywhere else or any conditions. So, and again, the league I always found. Um, obviously we, we took it very very seriously that you go we were heading into to Lancer Championship so we knew the quality of our opposition it wasn't at the, the level it was at in the in the Division 1 for a period of time and that's not being disrespectful but that's what we were faced into so I know Mayo and um, Galway are their, are their main threat um, but after that maybe they don't have another really tough tough battle to later on in the year so you really like even as a player also just the training, I'd much rather be preparing for a match. 100%. Yeah, than, than going back in and doing your runs or doing whatever the case you had to do instead of going out and playing a match. So. And you mentioned there the experience of preparing for that final, the bus journey, staying overnight in Dublin, playing the game. And we mentioned a lot of the players wouldn't have that experience, but in fairness, without making them a dig, a lot of the experienced players don't have a lot of experience of winning. Mm-hmm. Them game. That's not a dig, it's, yeah, yeah. it's just a fact. That's and the I reality think, of yeah. it. Yeah, and the more games you play or big games you play and you get over the line, that's that's a habit that brings confidence and then coming down the stretch the last five, ten minutes, that's what you draw back on. We were here before, we yeah. won here. Yeah. So, like we mentioned, the challenges for them coming up, I suppose, you mentioned Leinster and there seems to be another team coming hot in Leinster and Kildare against Monaghan. Monaghan again, good one week, bad the next, but Kildare missing Daniel Flynn were outstanding yesterday some of the scores were incredible so from a Dublin point of view it's probably good for them knowing that they have a proper challenger coming yeah 100% and that's not like Dublin won't overlook any other teams that they might meet along the way but definitely the competition is, is better to put 24 scores in any game is, yeah. is fantastic you know and again going through they look to have confidence they look to have a bit of belief in themselves they look to just really be enjoying their football when you look in you see them and, and they're, they're really having a good go and you know, will they will they stay up? That's the that's, that's the thing. The thing. There's there's five teams that can go yeah. down. I suppose from a Monaghan point of view, like they've avoided the drop and they've been in this position so many times. But they do have the dubs coming. It's 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's a big a, ask. Like, big and, ask. you know, Monaghan are the type of team that, you know, just might pull it out because there's so much about them and they have so much character. But just to go back to Kildare, it's so, it's great to see. It's great to see a team, you know, a Kildare team coming back because for, I'd say, about 10 years, just psychologically, Leinster team's just, just accepted. Mm. Yeah. Just to be second best to Dublin. And that the side of it, I don't know, does Dennis agree with this now, but the side of the Dublin jersey, they just lay down. Yeah. And uh, I think that, you know, went right throughout the province and they suffered for it. So it's good to see, and especially the way the personnel Lens or Kildare have in, in charge of them now. And, you know, they have real men that, genuinely care about the real Kildare men that's the point I'm trying to get at and they want Kildare to do well and it's just great to see them to push push yeah. on with that Yeah and like you said 24 scores is nothing to turn your nose up to and the forwards they seem to have a lot more scoring forwards obviously we mentioned Daniel Flynn was missing the last day but like Kerwin kicked a couple of scores the last day now he wouldn't have been a name that I was too familiar mm. with like some of the scores they kicked the last day from all over the pitch all, all of the forwards were chipping in with him so it, like for me it's pleasing but they looked they look very athletic which yeah, they always have and now they're adding yeah. in the bit of football and I know Galvin's involved there how much he's doing I don't know I'm not even sure if he's there in match days but they do seem to have a bit about him like you mentioned the backroom team it's all looking positive for them and like the way I I've been very impressed with them during the league and yet they could still go down because still it's down, so ruthless. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting finale in the league. Obviously, Kerry, the only team probably with nothing to play for, but it'd be nice to give Tyrone a bit of pressure as well. So it'll be interesting last week of the Division 1. Yeah, so what you're trying to say is that Donaghy's in Armagh, Galvin's in Kildare and any positives <laughs> are just... Purely down the Kerry, man. That's coming from your mouth now, not mine. <laughs> well, I'm paraphrasing <laughs> you there. <laughs> but uh, like that, we, we mentioned Division 1, how how exciting it's been. And it, it has been very positive for, to be fair, even the teams that are struggling, they've learned a lot from it and they've a lot going forward. And a lot of teams are coming into form at the right time. Division 2, 3 and 4 are exactly the same. I suppose going into the game the weekend, Derry and Galway, I was expecting maybe a bit more fireworks and it kind of backfired and Derry going against the wind in the first half. Galway mm -hmm. seemed to be motoring well at the moment. I was a bit unsure going into it, Division 2, it's a lower standard, but they seemed to be going well and had a big win the weekend without Shane Walsh. So positives there as well for them. Yeah, you know, De Derry, I think, you know, Shane McGuigan losing them to the suspension he got the yellow card overturned but then he got suspended by wh whatever uh, he said to th that that was ridiculous because the same happened to me against Mayo with Goff actually as well yeah. for supposedly a body check on Killian O'Connor hmm. when I was going defending and it was a black card but I got suspended for the giving out the and the only reason I actually gave out was because they ignored me when I asked what it was for Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just I cracked me up the weekend and, and I think that would have took a lot of wind out of their sails mm. you know one of their main men and unfairly uh, suspended I thought and you know I, I think you, you, they needed everybody going down there because Galway are probably a Division 1 team and Derry are just maybe not a Division 1 team they're just on that edge mm. of Division 1 Division 2 and they needed everybody there and they needed to be going 100% and it just, just didn't work out for them Yeah like I mentioned earlier they went against the Breeze in the first half to concede a three goal two of them were actually turnovers and a poor kick out but I was there on my own head going I thought it was a funny one to go against the Breeze I personally prefer to go with the Breeze mm -hmm. initially try and build up a lead build a bit of confidence and see the wind can always was, change yeah and is that something that was that kind of looked from the weekend that the teams who started off with the with the breeze actually got a foothold mm. early on and went on to win the games like I think it was a common common thread throughout a number of the games across the weekend so but yeah if you if you get a bad start and then you know you're it's a big it was a big big hill to climb then in the second half for them so yeah and like that Keane O'Neill's above with Kildare at the moment obviously we'd know him well down in Kerry and look he's had a big he was with Kildare and he was with um, Tipperary down the line so it'd be interesting to see exactly what his role is with Kildare because I remember when he came or with Galway sorry but when he was with Kerry I remember at one stage he was trying to do a bit of work with the forwards but we were kind of a bit more off the cuff and he was saying if Gooch moves here you go there and if this fella goes here you and I remember just going to so confused I remember looking at Mikey Sheehy yeah. and Mikey was just kind of looking back and I was like oh this is very confusing but whatever he's doing above or helping out doing it, it seems to be working they are kicking a lot of big scores and they're going for goals yeah, yeah. and and that that's funny you say that like because 
I don't think there'd be any way need to tell the likes of yourself and the Gooch and these boys how to play the game. You know, obviously play within certain parameters, not everybody way going off doing your own thing, but it's just some coaches just like to control everything and it's just about getting that balance and, you know, he, he seems to he seems to have it there in, in Galway because Shane Walsh would put him in the same bracket as, as them carry forwards that you just got to let him do his own thing while still playing within the parameters of how, uh, you know, we, we the teams attack. Yeah, and just going back when the best advice I ever got going out in the field was from Jack or Eamon and they always go, just do what you do. Now, I know you need a bit of structure, but more often than not, just, that, know, just, <laughs> just do what you do and it's a grand. But no, like, I suppose... I, I think that there's there's definitely room for uh, what suits the, the team best. Team. You know, so if, if you're looking for a guy to make a run of this position because it opens up X, Y and Z and plus you would have really intelligent footballers than some fo- footballers who aren't as mm. intelligent, you know. So they're really good players, but maybe if they did something, tweaked it slightly, it just opened up a whole new new different level for the team. So I think there there is merits in some, some form of, mm. obviously a great deal of coaching, but in trying to have these frameworks and then as an add-on is like, go do what you do best, play off the cuff. You Con- see it Conley was your best it. example of that, Jeremy. Yeah. He was yeah. the... Yeah. yeah. Do you know, like, and he was a player, do you know, when Dublin were struggling in the first few games, I was like, going, they could actually do with someone like him now at the moment who would, when they were getting a bit pedestrian, he would have just done something yeah. kind of out Look, of the it was frustrating at times with, mm-hmm. with Derma as well because everyone else is doing a certain thing and then he something's up, but then he, he pulls it off, so, you know, so there's no Yeah, no no, I was always told to skip the ball off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was my only yeah. to keep it safe. Oh, I suppose sticking with the point how free scoring goal we have been this year, their top scorers in Division 2, they have 13 goals in six games and I suppose we were talking about Mayo earlier in the chat about, you know, their lack of scoring power. If Galway can get a couple of goals against Mayo, the question will be asked, can they create enough opportunities to pull it back and that'll be the worry despite Galway probably playing lesser opposition throughout the year so far. It just all depends what Killian O'Connor, where, how far away he is and because uh, he's, he's going to chip in with, you know, six, seven points a game mm. and it just depends where he is and, if Galway bring it, they're going to score goals. You know, that seems to be the way with Mayo. They, they concede goals. And if Mayo bring the intensity that they can bring, have Galway learned enough in Division 2 to deal with that? And that, that that's really the the reality of uh, when, when them two teams meet. Can Galway deal with the intensity? And is Killian O'Connor going to be available? Yeah, Killian obviously is going to be a big one. For me, he's the most intelligent forward in Gaelic football I just think he, he has a great knack of obviously getting the scores with mixing the dark arts as well he's well able to do them silly fouls that oh jeez I didn't mean it but gets away with it yeah how is he going to be up to scratch like he's played very little football now in two years it's and it's hard injury. going like and we mentioned Ryan O'Donoghue and he's done really well but he doesn't have much support up there they are still very yeah. reliant on him but I was I was looking at uh, Dean Rock yesterday I think you you carry a free taker not that mm. Dublin are carrying Dean but looking at how important he is for the team how accurate he is on the freeze you know you need a player that you can rely on Killian O'Connor's that yeah. player you know if he's maybe not match fit he's still able to kick the freeze takes a bit of the heat off O'Donoghue as well and you, and you put him on the team if he's twerking. he's a good comparison actually Dean Rock with Killian O'Connor because the bottom they, their movement is so good you'll be looking yeah. at they don't have exceptional pace but they always seem to have right space place. and they move at the right times to create space for other players so like you said even if he's not 100% fit he has the experience and the knowledge and the intelligence to get himself through games without being at 100% which is obviously be a big thing like that the leadership he'd show it's obviously going to be a huge plus if they can get him back because I suppose similar to the Conor Callan argument for Dublin, I do, I do, I'm not hearing how close he is to being back or what exactly the issue is. Yeah, you know? well, look, he's he's not back now. He's not on the bench yesterday, so mm. it's unlikely that he starts the next day either. So you think he's just yeah prime for for championship then? Get himself right. There's no yeah. rush to get back. No league final to get back for. You just go give him plenty of time and come back in. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. I suppose my old rivals Cork finally got a win. Um, a good win, yeah. yeah. A good win against Down, who were look, Down are struggling badly with injuries. And like it was an argument I listened to on the radio, it was about soccer and it was about Liverpool fans and um, Everton. If Everton went down, Liverpool would get a bit of crack off it, mm-hmm. slagging them, but it's no good for them. And yeah. similar for Kerry, you'd give Cork a bit of a ribbing, but it's no good for, for Kerry football. 
I don't think it's any good for the GAA seeing Cork go down to Division 3 that's just my opinion because I think Cork are such a big county we need them competing but it was a good win and they had Sherlock there in the forward too I think he kicked 1-7 and they were Serious brilliant scores yeah. yeah. so it was a good form. I badly need a win but I yeah, see pictures of the attendance it was it was fairly sad looking no in fairness so mm. um, it'll be interesting to see how they can kick on a big game against Offaly now in the last game yeah I think it goes to the wire um, that's going to be good momentum they're positive now after that good performance going in with their tails up and, and going and put it back to back and they kind of they need that going into the championship you know they've they've got it all ahead of them to do and they, in the summer time face into a Kerry who are league finalists now so you know that's that's going to be a tough outlook for them for yeah, the months ahead I think winning the last two games no matter how bad the league is if you can finish on a bit of a flurry mm-hmm. like we mentioned Dublin earlier they can they'll be looking to win finish with three wins and the trot it'll be huge for them but I suppose on the other hand you have Down who are Back down out to Division Three, just don't seem to have any luck at all at the moment. No, I don't. I don't think it's much to do with luck. I just think they're in a bad. They were in a bad place. Uh, I seen them last year, you know, against Donegal, and they were so so poor. Um, and you know, sh- down who had a great tradition. We all talk about tradition and how important it is now. And surely to God, they like down can fire out fifteen better players than that one out than and play better mm. than than how they did last year and they. They just seem to be in a, in a rut and in a, in a hole again in this year, and you don't you don't have much hope for them in terms of. I think that's another team that has to rebuild, and you see Connor Lafferty doing great work with yeah. the with the under twenties and get that crowd through, and whatever else comes comes behind them, and they've just got to you no know, rebuild from the ground up again. Yeah, and obviously sticking with Cork, like we mentioned, they're playing awfully next, and um, one of my former teammates is involved with Offaly tomorrow, so Shea's obviously living in Cork. With a, with a long time and he was actually tipped for the Cork um, job, job. At, at certain stages so it'd be interesting just to see like obviously they won in Ireland and the 20 as well recently so it's not going to be an easy game for him and obviously you have the positivity of winning this weekend and awfully got a bad beating off Roscom on the weekend they won't want to finish the league off so on a low point so it's going to be interesting and like every division so far it's just um every game there's, there's something to it there's very few yeah. games left that mean nothing yeah and, and even from a player's point of view <clears throat> now you're looking at jerseys you're looking at positions mm-hmm. you're looking at panels for championship fellas getting dropped all that kind of stuff so this is going out next weekend is like it's do or die no matter who you are no matter what your team is actually doing from, from an individual point of view it's like well this is my jersey I'm getting a chance and I want it or if your sub going to come on it's like this is probably we're going to have internal games we're going to have challenge games but not actually real life um, competition so as a player definitely you're going to be feeling it's all or nothing no matter what now next weekend no matter what the score is no matter what the, what I'm facing into it's, it's all out yeah and just I suppose coming into the last couple of games and obviously there are repercussions for relegation to the Talty and Cup it might be is it getting forgotten about already is it it's the emphasis solely on oh you don't get to compete for the Sam Maguire instead of you're actually going down a level but it's a chance for you to get we yourself play, back yeah. up because we see it at club level the grades work for me personally obviously it's different when you're playing with a team that are competing for Sam Maguire but I I think it's a no-brainer like and it's already it's a, it's a no-brainer like yeah. the, there's such a sense of entitlement out there you know everybody should compete and you say it's the same in hurling, it's the same in club. It's the same in ladies football. There, there's grades, so why why should senior men's be any different? And you know, having everybody and you know everybody can compete for Sam Maguire the way it is, but having the Telton Cup and people dismissing it already, I, I just think it it annoys me that entitlement. It annoys me the fact that you know if you're good enough, you you'll play for Sam Maguire. Yeah, yeah you get your chance. Yeah, and like like you often say to a team, you have to go backwards, go forwards, and we mentioned it earlier about. Um, a couple of the teams in Division 1 getting to Crow Park and playing for Silverware that's what you want you want to be competing for Silverware mm-hmm. and sometimes you have a, a lot of teams to be fair are competing for Sam McGuire, but they're not do you know, whereas if you go down a grade you do get a chance to play more games against teams at your own level with the chance of Silverware that has to be appealing for teams even if you look at your own look at my own club or mm. the club players you know so you're going out you don't get a lot especially if you're not a, a leading club you don't get a lot of chance to win something so if there's a if there's a cup competition or you make a playoff at a league there's a huge buzz around the place because you get, get an actual chance to win something so I'd definitely be of the opinion that it's, it's got to benefit players or there's some desire and, and I think it's up to there's an onus on everyone to try and 
not build it up or blow up the competition, but to, you know, to go out and support it or to speak well about it or, you know, just because a team is playing at a lower division doesn't make them any lesser than anybody else. You know, they're playing at the quality that they're, that they're able to compete at and we should all like get behind it and make sure it works. Yeah. Definitely, there's responsibility in the GA to, to really roll one behind it and, you know, make, be it a team holiday or make a real good incentive, you know, and Dennis says, it's a feeling of winning with your team. Mm. It doesn't matter you're winning, it's, it's a great place to be. But sure, that's the thing, that we, we all go back to the clubs, how great it is. I, I have a novice championship below in Kerry, I have a junior championship. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to get an intermediate championship, but when I was playing in them, they were to be on end all for me and my club. And mm. we were, when we won them, we celebrated them fairly well. Exactly. Like so, I, I look. I think once the GA get behind it, the media get behind it. It gets the coverage it it deserves. It can be brilliant for for the GA. So hopefully now it'll start picking up instead of making it such a negative that a team won't be competing for the Sam Maguire that they can be seen as a positive that they're going to be competing for silverware that they have a great chance of winning. And I suppose a team that were unlucky the weekend and unlucky is probably the wrong word for Mana uh, they drew the weekend should have won they had a point chalked off um, mm -hmm. it still is beyond me look people make mistakes but I can understand how this mistake was making it was, it was a very visible looks, point looks obvious yeah, yeah from, the, from the video even, you would think the referee is directly uh, in line with that it wasn't even like uh, he was fairly central as well even mm. where the ball landed at I, I couldn't understand it and I was there going you have two umpires you have two linesmen right one linesman probably unlucky won't be able to say but you have the referee even the goal is reaction and you're going to have mistakes all over the place and different decisions go different ways but this was just ah oh, it's criminal it's for me I, I, I think it's just the fact that you know the referee is just picking up one of the lads taking him out for the day and that's, that's the reality if it's, it's someone like there's and this is probably taking it a wee bit to the extreme, but he, he, because the thing is so serious now and so much time has gone into it, you know, even umpires need a wee bit of training and you know what to watch out for. I'd say he just took the eye off it for a millisecond and he missed it. Mm. And then, because I've, I've even read the keeper's reaction, even knowing. Yeah, well, you can you can forgive it if it's up high over the post yeah, part. You can, you know, possibly forgive it. Just even looking at his position, but what this means for, for Mana, like it's just, like we said, you put so much into the league now and we, we mentioned there is this lure of trying to compete for the Sam Maguire and get up, like they would have been pushing for, for promotion as well. Yeah. It's just you're wronged really and like you'll always feel a sense of injustice because of it um, yeah. like I was trying to think if i ever been in that position I, I don't think I have I'm not sure if you have ever club or county game no there. Dennis definitely wouldn't because they never played I'd say cool <laughs> so we always had they the, always had the hockey no 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 I, th I was probably on the, to get the, the, other, the other side of it um, we were playing Kildare uh, in a in a Leinster final, Leinster semi final. And towards the end of the game, Kildare were were, were really on top. Have gave a great game, but we got a dubious free. Uh, Bernard Brogan and the Kildare defender were running out to the to the sideline to get a ball, and we and we picked up a dubious free and we kicked the score and we won the game. And I think that was the moment where there was a lot of yeah a lot of anger and frustration from Kildare. So something that was so soft and something that was so important that it went our way, and we. Yeah, we won the game on the back of it. So I think very much what they were feeling is exactly what Fermanagh were feeling there yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's it's like that when you when you get the the look at the green, it's great. But mm. I just I just felt for him now and look, it's one of them ones that'll go on and look, it is human error. But it's look when it, things are this serious, it, it shouldn't be happening. And like yeah. you could nitpick the game. I think people are saying about the steps and stuff. But look, it was just it was just a poor error that shouldn't be happening Not at this nice level. To see, yeah, to be yeah. And I suppose just another talking point from the weekend was um, Watford lost by a point, but I don't think I've ever seen a GA team finish with 11 men. I think they had three red cards in one half and a black card. So they haven't been going great. They lose by a point. It was fierce effort put in by them, but to lose four men in a game. What's the number? When, is there a number that if you I hit it, know. it calls off the oh, game? Is it eight? Is it I'm eight? Is it? I'm not sure. I'm right. nearly sure there is now, but I, I can't say what what number it is now. But you know that that's just this poor discipline, discipline. and that's just silly, yeah. silly stuff. Now to have three men sent off and then a black yard, and there's no whatever level you're playing at or whatever much training you're doing. There's just no excuse for that. No, and like to be fair, it actually happened. Um, discipline actually Derry against against Galway. I've seen um, 
the red card for moting as well. Like, there's actually no excuse for it. Like, yeah. and it is hard to. I think as a manager, argue. you're looking for, you know, you're looking for aggression off your team. You're mm. looking to stand up. You're looking for, to back each other up in the field. But at the same time, there's there's that thin line, and you know, it's it's easy crossing. Uh, definitely, it's easy crossing. But at the same time, if it's if it starts to build up in the team and you get to three or four cards, and if someone needs to make a call here to. Yeah, it's, just, it's like that cliche that goes around the dressing room it says aggression but just controlled aggression yeah, that's yeah, controlled yeah, aggression you know, yes, never ever seen controlled like, aggression if you get away with it it's controlled <laughs> if you don't get away with it it's, yeah, it's but that's current. the thing and I suppose um, another huge talking point is loud another promotion on the cards the Mickey Hart effect two two promotions in two years to his fair going and like what he's probably doing for GA in general down the load is, is huge and look obviously look I don't think they'll be eyeing a length of title this year but they're going in the right direction to hopefully maybe get competitive yeah. yes 12 years since they were yeah, in the last Lancer final so they were unlucky that day they were very unlucky that day so again <laughs> referee decision yeah. umpires yeah. you know they're definitely one of the team like you said 12 years after being wrong it is a long time to be carrying that yeah resentment or whatever like so so they're getting a bounce now they're performing well they look to be yeah, gelling together as a team and know what they're about you know and that maybe yeah that's two years under you know really top managers so be interesting to see obviously in some counties unfortunately that your league is your your best chance of, of playing football your best best chance of winning best chance of playing games and you know be interested to see how they carry on into summertime to see the, the important thing for Loud, like as you said, they're not going to be challenging for Leinster um, or even anywhere near North Ireland, but to keep the momentum going. So this group Mickey's done great work with um, is whatever comes in behind him and the back set up and just keep that, you know, success breeds and whatever way you define success or whoever you see it, success breeds success. And like for Loud to be going up now and... You know things are going well. They, it's there's a big thing to get a group behind them to keep the keep the conveyor belt going, and that's what it's all. That's what Cork need to do. Mm. Cork need to get momentum. You know, battle it out for a few years, and you know, stabilize and start start rebuilding. Down need to do the same, and and you know, allow they're heading in the right direction. Whether you could argue the other other two teams aren't. To be fair, Edge and Cork are trying to do that. They're, they've had a big upheaval in players. I think it was Pat Spillane mentioned it on the League Sunday last night. They had 15 deputants so far in the league. They have a lot of injuries. So, and we did mention sometimes you have to go backwards, go forwards, mm-hmm. or whatever. Like so, like that, you need this. And sometimes you just need to wipe the slate clean, start afresh with fellas who maybe don't have the, I suppose, the baggage from previous setbacks or whatever. Like, and I suppose the team that I've been following very closely in the in the league has been London. I suppose I I represented London way way back when, but uh, they lost to Cavan the weekend by a point. Um, Cavan promoted now, yeah. which is good because like it was only a couple of years ago they were above in Division One. I remember my first um, first year retired, I travelled up to Cavan to watch Kerry play them, and Kerry pulled away in the last five ten minutes. But they were the type of Division One team that just needed to survive one season Division One before they'd start push to on. push on, and they just. They just couldn't survive in them. They were losing games in the last five, ten minutes and they won an Ulster title and similar to Tipperary, free fell down into Division 4 but they snuck a, a win against London which I was disappointed with because I was there going, I'd love to have seen London get promoted but for Cavan now promoted, maybe going into Ulster with a bit of a pep in their step. Yeah and, and I think Cavan for you know the, whoever they meet in the Ulster Championship will be sticky proposition. Even though they've played in Division Four, they'll still you you wouldn't take them lightly. That's what I'd be saying. Um, they've you know we talked about momentum and taking groups through. They they have great work at underage, but they've never seemed to be able to kick on. And mm. you know you can argue that uh, they beat Donegal in the Ulster final two the two years when the the lockdown championship and you know. I, I I don't know what happened. Nobody knows what mm. happened in terms of Tipperary one one monster that year and Cavan one Ulster and I just I, I just don't know what how how you would quantify what Cavan are about or what's going on and why they haven't been able to kick on because they do take a lot of boxes in terms of tradition, identity and you know that underage they do good work at underage but it, it just doesn't seem to work out for them now. Yeah, it's 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 a hard one to actually to explain. I suppose sometimes I suppose. Players just kind of fall off. You get that success at underage, and it's you kind it's of tough. maybe lose the hunger it's for tough it. To and stay, yeah, stay together as a group. To things 
It's yeah, a commitment level, time. I think. By, do you know, when you put so much in at an underage level, sometimes you like to blow off a bit of steam. And I think young lads forget once you start blowing off that bit of steam, you're not that young anymore. And it's harder yeah, to get yeah, fit get again back. and up to that level of into county football, I suppose. But sticking with Division 4, we have a couple of big games coming up now as well. Tipperary and London. And then you have the local Connacht Derby there. You have Leitrim against Sligo. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, they're not at the same time. So hopefully the GA will do the right thing and put them together. Um, because otherwise, I think if Tipperary win Saturday night, they're promoted and it kind of takes the emphasis off the other game. But before we go on to that, I'm only getting it in my year how Eamon McGee togged out for London back in 2010. Yeah, back back in the day now I, and made the adventure to London for I think it was uh, six months and hooked up with the London lads. And I uh, have the honour, Kilkenny, actually the football team at the time, played three league games for him and I scored three points from midfield now. I was... Man of the match. Lord, it. And you uh, somehow managed to keep that quiet, yes, or last week when we were talking about all these full back players going up the field kicking <laughs> scores, and you kept that very quiet. Well, it was quiet. Division 4 against Kilkenny footballers now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to go into detail. No, I should have just uh, scored for three yeah. points from midfield. Eh? So before we finish, lads, we're going to rock it back up to Division 1. A lot at stake the last couple of games. Um, we're going to start with Dublin Mon, and personally, I can't see Dublin's momentum being stopped in this game. I think Dublin get the win and, and stay up, yeah, stay safe and unfortunately then Manning get relegated. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I just see there's too much going towards uh, Dublin. I think they've progressed so much from that first game against Armagh. They were nearly unrecognisable. You know, they weren't slick. They made so many bad decisions and, you know, you see that Dublin of old now coming. Maybe they're not at the level. I don't think they'll ever be at that level again, but uh, they're, they're going the right direction and, and unfortunately for Monaghan who you know, really pray themselves in that Division One status, and you know they fought very hard for it throughout the years. I think you know they they're gonna they're gonna lose out. Yeah, I think um, I'm gonna leave that to you, really getting poor old Monaghan. But uh, who goes on with him? Because there's another four teams that could go down. Yeah, I think unfortunately, it's, I think it could be Kildare after a fantastic league, played a lot of the games in really poor conditions, bad weather, narrowly defeated, and um, great win obviously against Dublin. But I think they. They come out to lose in the end uh, this weekend. So, yeah, I, I'm I'm hoping because you know Donegal have to play our man and Larry Kenny. You know I mentioned that earlier, mm. and they they haven't got a result. They beat Kerry in 2007, and have, haven't won a game since. And you know there's actually a debate in Donegal to get all the games out of Donald Park and Larry Kenny. <laughs> um, so I don't see us getting a result, and I think our man will, you know, take your advice and really go for it, and you know get that. Uh, try and get that league final and you know Donegal will be hoping for uh, results to go to go elsewhere and you'd, you'd think that Kil- Kildare lose out I'm, I'm hoping Kildare lose out to be honest with you Yeah it's, it's actually it's a great sign of the league that unless you're extremely consistent you will get relegated and that's that's the, that's the way it's worked out mm-hmm. that you have five teams now that could get relegated who at times have been exceptional mm-hmm. like we, we've raved about uh, Kildare and how good they have been in different games and the weekend kicking 24 points but could still find themselves relegated due to a bit of inconsistency and I suppose Kerry are in the final Mayo will be looking to beat Kildare and like you mentioned there you, you would fancy Armagh maybe to beat Donegal who's, who's getting there? I'll go. I'll go with Armagh. I, I, I think. Uh, I think the way the permutations work out, that if Armagh, you know, do well enough, that they they can get to the, they can get to the league final now. So I, I'll go with uh, Armagh. I'll, I'll double that. Yeah, I think. I'd, apart from wanting to see in a minute, I think yeah, from from the get go, from the first game in Crow Park, I think they're the most enjoyable to watch and uh, really bring in a really good standard. Um, and eye catching football, and I think they'll make it, make it into the final, and it'd be great to see them up against the the favourites for the All Ireland. Yeah, in the final. Stop, stop doing that now. Stop building up, <laughs> yeah, Kerry. The dead certs for the All Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be interesting like that. I I think either way for Kerry, I actually think I'd prefer to see them play Mayo. Um, from a progression mm-hmm. side of it, I just think Mayo always bring that manic yeah. intensity to a game, which I think would stand to Kerry because they bring this raw aggression and unpredictability because I think when Mayo are at their best they are that 
unpredictable. They just yeah, go. It's a bit kamikaze. Yeah. Chaotic. And, yeah. and I'd say that's why Dublin kind of struggled with them over, not in terms, they always beat them, but yeah. they've, they've always troubled Dublin and it was just that chaotic madness that they brought. And I think that, I think Kerry would struggle with it as well. I think it'd be a great test for them going forward into championship, having a good test in Crow Park yeah. as well. So my other, my only fear for Kerry is they're becoming a bit like Cork were back 10 or 15 years ago where they're winning league after league and we're falling short in mm-hmm. the championship. So that's a big fear for me. But look, all in all, I, I think it's been a it's been a brilliant league. We're looking forward to another cracking round of league games in all the four divisions. Um and then it's roll on championship like two or three it's weeks later. It. It's it's absolutely unbelievable because personally I used to hate oh, the yeah. gap between league and championship. Anything that involved long running <laughs> I hated it. Yeah, we got a small bit of a break for a club championship. You get away for two weeks, and it was like the best thing ever. It was like gone holidays for two weeks during the middle of the year. But we would always stay training. It'd be knacker playing club championship. Yeah, I, I think we were we were the same. We would play around the championship, and then you know it was just dog. You were dogged for them mm-hmm. a few weeks, and it was it was so horrible. You'd be just dreading going to training, and uh, I think I would enjoy this wee break where you can you can just look forward to football. Yeah, I, I don't know what all the complaining is about retirement. It's great. <laughs> but uh, just one last question. Is there anybody throughout the leagues, one player that stood up, really made a big impact that you think could kick it on during the, during the championship? Michael Murphy is full forward. <laughs> <laughs> Another full forward, Rain O'Neill. You know, Rain, Rain O'Neill, yeah, I think he was the, he was the big one and he, he stood out from day one and, you know, really put himself on the shop one door and, Richard played against them in a in an Ulster club semi final against Cross mm-hmm. McGlenn and I kinda had him earmarked since that because he was so good and what he was kicked the way he was kicking points and I would have marked him as the best up and coming uh, young player in in the province at the time and he seems to have kicked on now and he's the he's the best up and coming player now in, in, in the country. Yeah. I'm kinda torn between two players. Ryan O'Donoghue, because I think his leadership has been brilliant in the absence of Killian O'Connor. And another player who isn't young, but he could be the turning thing for Kerry, which is Tyg Morley. And somebody who surprised me, I thought he might struggle this year because he's had a few injuries, didn't have much luck the last couple of years, went in at centre-back and just shows that sometimes just game intelligence and leadership can steady a ship. In that position, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a crucial position on the team. And if you've got someone... Yeah, we had Keane O'Sullivan for a lot Keane was the best in the game at it. Mm. You know, so... Yeah, it'd be interesting now if people are targeting that in the summer as well. You pull a male position and, you know, get a male in that hole. That's another thing you could do. So we just see how he copes with that. Well, that's all we have time for on today's show. A big thank you to my two guests, Eamon and Dennis. Cheers, thank you. Dan. And we'll see you all next week for another action-packed show. <laughs> <laughs>